Welcome back to this Let's Play of EU4. Today we'll be starting a run of uh, the Papal State and be the Popa. I don't think we've uh, done this before, when because uh, I stream this game also. I don't think I've played as the Papal State yet, so we'll be giving that a try today. Um, so the first thing in this first video, we're just going to be going over the country, looking over the situation of the nation, making some decisions with the estates and our rivals and some things like that before we actually start playing the game in our second video. So first thing, let's go over and see how our country's doing. Our our leader's a 1-1-2. So he kind of sucks. He's not much of a pope, but he'll have to do. He's not the worst I've had. He's not a whoever it is that the English start with. Henry the whatever. What is he? Let's see. Henry the sixth. I mean, he's an all zero. So you know what? We can only complain so much. Uh, he's got ship durability or in spy detection. Okay, neither of those are, eh, whatever. Mostly it's going to make it so people can make claims on us easier, but that's fine. Um, we are the we are the papacy, so we are the Pope. Let's see, our situation, we are currently Hungary, Teutonic Order, and Province. That's weird. Why would Teutonic Order... Rivalous, so they're way over here. Like they're not, they're over here, we're over here. I, I don't know why they rivaled us. That's really odd. But anyways, I guess whatever there. Um, We'll decide on who we want to rival in a minute. We'll uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, Our economy is, eh, I mean, we're making a little bit at full. Everything's at full maintenance, so it's not too bad. Trade... Well, our ideas um, got increased diplomatic reputation and religious unity. And finish everything, we get a discipline bonus. That's nice. Uh, tolerance of the true faith is nice. Twenty percent national tax modifier. Wow. Okay, then we're just uh, tithing everybody to death, and we're becoming rich apparently. Uh, prestige decay. Good. Cost to fabricate claims. That's nice. Production efficiency. Diplomatic advisor cost and aggressive expansion. Nice. Okay, this is why people do battle pope games apparently. I mean, you get a discount to aggressive expansion and your cost of fabricate claims is minus 25%. Very nice. Oh yeah, look at the description. It may also prove that we're rather good at forging documents. Ah, yes, of course. Completely legitimate. Um, oh. Good. Papal State gets a, a custom tree, which is nice, because a lot of there's plenty of countries that just have the generic one, so it's nice to have a uh, custom one. Let's see what we got in here. Zoom out slightly here. We've got owned a bunch of stuff in northern Italy. Oh, and gained a bunch of claims. That's nice. Switzerland that likes us. We'll get mercenary discipline. Okay. Ally three Catholic countries for 100 Diplo. Nice. So maybe we'll see if we can find three allies. Make 500. Okay. And Lithuania. Let's make Lithuania like us to get some missionary strength. Okay. That's fine. Not bad. Um. So our decisions, we can make mostly normal stuff. And we can make Kingdom of God if we... Looks like get a bunch of northern Italy. Nothing really in the south. So if we can claim all of northern Italy, eventually we can form Kingdom of God and get, wow, claims everywhere. <laughs> all right. Stability as usual. Nothing new there. We can support up to 14,000. Fine, fine. We do start with two vassals. That's pretty nice. All right. And then our estates. So... I was talking to some people before about this, and I haven't since, like I said, I haven't played this country before. It's interesting that I start at 49% versus most countries only start at uh, 29%. And if you're under 30% crown land, you actually take a penalty. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna seize land for sure right off, bam. And because we have so much crown land, we can actually give out, let's get the monthly admin power and monthly military power right off the bat because the monthly uh, monarch power from each of the estates is really important and really nice so i always try to get those early um i can't get the burgers one yet the monthly diplomatic power just because 
once again it costs us 10 percent of 10 10 crown land pretty much 10 percent so we'd go down to 24 and we'd get a big penalty so we're not going to do that yet we will we will go back to that later but we will put on some other ones let's see we don't need governing capacity um eventually i may take administrative advisor costs but right now i don't like to get the stability cost early because you start at plus zero normally and you want to get up to plus three as quick as you can or at least i do or at least plus two before i take something like this so maybe in the future the one we do want to take from all three estates is these ones everyone has one like this one's oversight by the clergy where it gives you 10 percent loyalty 10 percent uh, influence but it costs you 10 ab max absolutism so the absolutism mechanic doesn't show up till near the middle of the game so right now this penalty doesn't affect us and the plus 10 so what we're trying to get a lot of times here is big loyalty bonuses what happens is if the loyalty that's what this heart is in everybody if the loyalty gets up to 50 percent for all three of these we can seize crown seize land for the crown and increase our crown land which over time gives us bonuses like once it gets up to 50 percent we'll get a tax and an absolutism bonus and the higher we get it the more stuff we'll get so we're trying to get our crown land as high as possible and the best way to do it is to seize land another way to do it is to develop your provinces but we're trying to seize land. So if we can get all these to 50%, um, so if you look on here, it says equilibrium right now is currently 59% for the clergy. Currently it's at 30, but equilibrium is where it tries to get to. So over time, if we do nothing, eventually this number will hit 59%. So if all three of these hit 50% or more, we can seize land, which causes them to all lose 20% loyalty. So as long as they're all 50 or above, nothing bad will happen because if they drop under 30 there can be rebels um, there can be negative status effects like right now the clergy is giving us tax taxes because they're positive they're over 30. if they drop under instead we'll get more chances for rebellions like unrest and a lot of negative effects so you just don't want to go under 30. what we're going to do is we're going to take a bunch of these to increase the equilibrium so we can just keep seizing land over and over again so we'll take oversight by the clergy, and uh, that's probably all we're going to take for now. Let's look at the nobility. Nobility is going to have another one just like that. I don't want any of these. So it also has another one. Military advisor costs. Maybe we take in the future. Same thing. I'm not sure. The big one we want is right to counsel. That's this same, ver same thing as the clergy. 10% loyalty bonus. So we want that. Another one I think we might want is Strong Duchies. It gives it a small amount of influence. And the big thing it gives, though, is it gives us plus two diplomatic relations. So pretty much our two vassals right now are taken up, so we still have four slots available for diplomatic relations for more allies or more vassals. And it gives uh, Liberty Desired Subjects bonus, like so it lowers their desire for Liberty. So I, I think we'll take that one. And I think we're going to take this one too. So Supremacy over the Papacy is nice because pretty much it gives 10% no loyalty and 10% influence to all three of them, even though it's a nobility privilege. The only downside is they can call agendas at any time they want, but that's not really a problem. So it's pretty nice because it gives you that 10% loyalty to everybody. Uh, equilibrium. Now the one thing you do want to watch is, as you can see, we're giving... We're also giving influence to everybody. If the influence gets too high on everybody, like if it becomes 100%, then whatever group it is, a disaster can happen, and that group will try to seize control of your country. It's very bad. So you don't want to get that influence to get so high that they can seize control of your nation, though. So that's something to keep an eye out for. Because a lot of times, like right now, it's fine. But if you click too many events that maybe, let's say, favor the clergy, you could end up too high, and that's dangerous. Um, the burgers, we definitely eventually want land of commerce. Uh, sometimes I take the prestige one, but I don't think we need to right now. Just because um, we get plus one from our devotion, which is what theocratic governments get. And we get plus one from being Korea controller, which we start as because we, we are the Pope. We start with control of the, uh, the Korea, so... 
I don't think we need to worry about patronage right now. Um, we definitely want to take so free enterprise is what it's called. That's the 10% loyalty one for the burgers. And I don't think... Uh, I don't think we want anything else right now. Um, if you don't use the estates mechanic too often, another big one is this one, indebted to burgers. Um, if you're in a big war or for some reason you need a lot of money and you need it now, instead of going to your uh, the bank under the money bag, under the economy, and taking out loans, you can click this button and you'll get five loans immediately, but only 1% interest. So they're quite a bit cheaper. You do get a few negatives, like a little inflation, a little trade efficiency penalty, but it's much cheaper to take five loans from the burgers. Instead of if we went over here and took out a loan, we'd have to pay 4% interest right now. So it's just a better way to do it if you really need some money. So I think that's good for the no, the uh, I think that's good for now. Let's see, we're at seventy nine percent here, so they're great. Fifty seven here and fifty four here. The burgers are a little low, so maybe in the future we take you know the prestige one or something just to get us something else there. I I don't know what else we could take. Yeah, we probably will have to in the future because that so taking actually the plus one of the uh, diplomatic power actually gives us a negative to our loyalty so we will have to cancel that out with something maybe patronage of the arts is probably the easy one to take but we'll see like i said in the future we'll figure that out for now this is a pretty good setup um what we want to figure out also now is who we want to rival like, what do we want to do here? Um, so our current situation, we want to go north. Like, eventually we'll want to take all of Italy, probably, but... Let's see. We do have a claim on Venice. One of Venice's lands, and we have these two our vassals. Let's look at that. The one downside right now is that anybody that's in the Empire... If we declared war on, say, Siena, we have to deal with Austria, which is a problem. Eventually, there's going to be an event called the Shadow Kingdom, and a lot of the Italian states leave, and then we can gobble them up a lot easier without worrying about Austria and all of Austria's allies intervening. So, we'll have to think about that. Let's see who's rivaled us. I think we just looked at that a minute ago. Who was it? Wasn't that the Teutonic Order? It was a bunch of weird people. Yeah, Hungary and Province. So it's nobody really by us. Nobody we're probably going to rival back. Maybe Province, because we do have... I always forget about this, and I'm sure I'm going to forget about it more as we're playing. But yeah, Papial State starts with this little province over here, along with its ones over here. It's, it's kind of a weird one. So that's why we could end up in a war. So Province, I guess, isn't too bad. The problem is, is that province tends to, oh, they already are, tends to ally with France. So it's problematic to fight them. We really probably want, let's take a look at our options, though. We want to rival somebody right in here. Um, Let's see. I always wonder sometimes how it determines who it wants to give us its choices. But, because like, for instance... Milan's not here. If somebody knows, maybe let it let me know in the comments how it determines who we can rival. We, I would say Milan's are probably pretty equal with us. For some reason, we can't can't deal with them. Um, I'm gonna say Florence is probably a good choice because they're probably one of our earlier victims if we can get them, and maybe Venice because we have a core on them, and then maybe. Maybe then province be a decent choice. But let's see, who would we... So something you want to look at is, like, for instance, since we can't rival Milan anyways, maybe we'll ally them. So what you want to see is... Who they're rivaling. Genoa, Switzerland, and Savoy. So what, what happens is if we rivaled Savoy also, then Milan would get a... They would like us even more because we're rivaled to one of their enemies. That would give us another boost. Oh, interesting. Austria's also rivaled Savoy. So we could probably get an alliance with Austria and Milan if we rivaled Savoy. So let's do that. 
Let's rival. Uh, let's do Florence, like we said. Venice. Because Venice isn't too bad if we can ally Milan and Austria, and we should be able to. This should definitely put us over in Savoy. Okay, that'll be good. And what we can do now is, you can see here it says enemy of enemy, plus one per month. And Austria should have the same thing. And it goes up to like a plus 25 or so. Like it's pretty, it's a pretty decent bonus. So over time they'll even like us more. And they already like us. A heart means they're friendly towards us, which means, yes, they'll probably already ally with us. Good. I'll ally with you. And uh, I guess we will unpause temporarily. Like I said, we aren't actually going to play anything out. But we need to let a day go by to offer another alliance. Check. check. And you know what? We might want to find a third ally. Just because we had a mission. Which one was it? This one. We gain 100 Diplo power if we got a third ally. Um... Hmm, who would we want to ally? You know what else I didn't we didn't look at? Our government reforms. Because yeah, we have a unique government type because we're we're not just a theocracy, we're like the theocracy. We are the Pope. But yeah, we are the Pope. Fixed to kingdom rank. Prohibits switching government types. We get tolerance of the true faith. Prestige from missionaries, pretty much. Oh, and clergy influence. That's why the clergy were at 79%. I was wondering why they were so high. 79% uh, in uh, loyalty is very high. So we're getting 20% bonus there. Um, hmm. I notice it says locked at kingdom rank. That mean... Ah, so we cannot change to an empire. Which, empire rank just gives you some bonuses... It helps you over here with governing capacity. You can see it says government rank plus 200. The bonus, that bonus will go up if we change to an empire, which normally happens either by you getting a thousand development and then this button highlights and you can change to an empire or through some kind of events. Like um, if we were playing somebody, some other country and we formed Italy, Italy just becomes uh, an empire, I think, for instance. Um... So for all I know, maybe Kingdom of God will make us into an empire, but I don't know. Because it looks like there's too many things on here. So I guess we'll see what happens when it happens. Um, For now, I think we're pretty good. If we look at this, there's nothing really going on here. It says we have a 100% chance right now to be the next Korea controller. So if something happened, like if our guy died tomorrow... We'll still have it. I noticed, I'm guessing because we're the Pope, we can't get all the um, usual benefits that are up here. You know, like increased taxes or increased uh, Diplo reputation and all the bonuses that are over here. So that's interesting. I noticed we can investigate heresy. Oh, costs 500 from the Curia Treasury. We lose 5% reform desire. Oh, so you could spam this to try to keep... Huh, I've never tried that before. I wonder if you could keep the war from happening, you know, between the Protestant and Catholic League. That'd be an interesting playthrough, but you'd have to try to really maintain your control over the Korea to be able to spam it, because if some other country gets it, well... So we also have, we can spend our own money to increase our influence, our chance to become controller. And we can spend... Our own money for the same thing to get 10% of 10 influence. Interesting. Okay. I like how we're gaining corruption from it. From this one and then this one. I like how we spent 47 and 11, almost 12, made it into the Korea coffers. The rest of it? Well, we kept it for uh, administrative purposes. Yeah. I needed some gold gilding on my chair and my desk. But that's fine. So, do we have somebody we could make a third choice? Let's look for an alliance, because we could use a third one. And, oh, and there's nobody to make right now. Well, maybe it's, wait a second, we have to wait a day. Ah, we do have choices. So, oh, I should show this real quick. So as you can see, we have four out of six now, because we took strong duchies under the estate. So even though we took two alliances and have had two vassals... So if we hadn't taken strong duchies, we'd be maxed out already. 
So now we can take another uh, alliance with somebody and then in the future maybe get another vassal. So that'll be nice. Well, let's look at that situation. 40 choices. There's somebody around here we'd actually want to ally with. Aragon. Somebody nearby us would be better. Mantu's right there. Ferreira. I don't really want to ally these guys because, well, frankly, I'd like to cut a hole through them instead. <laughs> they can ally me with me when they're my vassal. Um, Brent, Baden. There's a lot of people that are ally with us. Though. Um, and if you look at the map, you can see who it is. The the uh, green will. The red will not. Um, and then the gray just aren't choices for whatever reason. Like this one's, you know, like Naples as an, an independent country. They can't join us. They may become independent. I've noticed that happen a lot in my games. So, um, who's this up here? Three leagues. I guess we could ally them. I want somebody that's nearby to help us with people like Venice. And also help us grow upwards. Um, so we could al I guess we could ally with somebody like a Ferreira early and use them to help us against people like, you know, Florence, Luca, Genoa. That's true. I guess there are a lot of choices here. We could ally Ferreira. Let's go let's go with that. Because we can always break the alliance later. That'll give us, bam, 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 three alliances. And look at that. Without even starting the game, we finished a mission and gained 100 Diplo power. Very nice. And now we've got... We need to improve the opinion of a bunch of countries. And the nobility has to be loyal without too much influence and gain 20 army tradition. That's very nice. Okay, so I think we're in a pretty strong spot. I think our last thing we'd really like to figure out is... Let's let the time go over two days. There we go. Because I'd like to send... Uh, subject nations and allies. A diplomat to make our allies happy and a diplomat to keep our subjects happy. And then... I'm not sure who we want to declare war on next. Because we could use our guys here to... Um... You know, make some claims, some completely legitimate claims, mind you, on somebody. But for the moment, you know what we'll do with one of our guys? We had, yeah, make Switzerland like us. Let's go towards that one. We can get that mission done. We'll improve relations with Switzerland. And our last guy will just uh, keep around. And you might be wondering why this guy's idle. Because it says target allies, why isn't he doing it? Well, the problem is you can only send a diplomat once a I think it's once a month to every country, like every 30 days or something. And so right now, we've recently sent a diplomat. We have to wait till December 13th. That's pretty much everybody we just talked with. We'll have different dates. December 12th for Austria, and Ferreira will be a little later. December 14th, yeah. And then our, our guy will start going out. So that's fine. I think we're in good shape here. Um, oh, you know what? Last thing we should do. Lower our maintenance of everything for now. But while we're sitting here letting relations build up and thinking about what we want to do, mothball our forts, we can allow our bank to build up. Because 362 every month, it'll build up to a, you know, a decent enough amount. So we'll let that build up. And then we'll wait because we just started. Yeah, we got a couple soldiers couple things here but you really got to be careful because the wrong war we could easily be you know annexed we're only four province right now so we really got to plan out what we're going to do and think about it but i think this is a good spot uh next time we'll uh we'll lay out our plans of conquest but until then if you guys have any questions comments wondering why i did some of the things i did let me know in the comments sections uh got any ideas for uh what we should go for let me know in the comment section and i hope to see you guys next time thanks for watching